Hello class. In this video I'm going to finish up some finishing touches to my section perspective rendering. And the stuff in this video I've actually co covered in different videos on different kinds of drawings. It's all the same. Just quickly show it in this. And that's scale figures and um, some some lighting techniques. So I'm going to start with scale figures. Again I, I already have downloaded from Google some silhouettes pretty easy to do. I did, you, you can cut them out, whatever the case might be. I'm going to just select some. I'm going to start by cropping, however you want to get these out of here. I just want to get the black area. So I'm going to start with this guy over here. So if I crop them out, then if I uh, do something like my magic wand, make sure uh, contiguous is not checked, and select on the black. Oops. I select on the white by accident, select on the black. I select that character. I'm going to do control C for copy. I close down these things from my last video here um, and come into my drawing. Make sure I'm out of layer near the top of the drawing and uh, control V for pasting this guy in. And scale figures, of course, they want to be to scale. So one way of just sort of quickly doing it, especially for perspective at an angle where you're not eye level, um, I'm just going to come and put it next to a door and then uh, transform this scale down to sort of match him what I think he would fit to sort of through the door, something like that. Maybe he's a little tall still. Let's shrink it just a little bit. There we go. And I've got a scale figure. Now in this case, black really represents my cut line, so I'm not going to go with a full black figure. Of course, you could you could do any color. You can even do a picture of a real person if that's what you wanted to do. I'm just going to uh, do the simple way of actually just making him a little bit transparent here, about 50%. Sort of give see the detail a little bit because the scale figure in this drawing really isn't the, the the most important feature of this as it often is in perspectives or things of that nature, but just adds a little life to the drawing. And I'm going to put at least one more scale figure in. So I'm going to go back to here. Again, you might download another person, whatever the case might be. I'm going to undo a couple steps and uh, just crop out another person. Let's go with, uh, I'll go with her over here. And sort of do the same thing. Select my magic wand just to select this person. If, if you have a real person, a picture of a person, you might have to select them in some other ways, uh, so using a, a other selection tools to be able to get them. But obvious, obviously, a black silhouette becomes easy to select out from Photoshop. And I'll also just paste this woman in over here. I'll place her up in this room up in here, for example. I could place them anywhere. I'll scale it based on this. There's actually This is actually a little doorway here. This is why this. Uh, wall doesn't come all the way down so it gives me a chance to sort of get a sense of scale in this room and looking out this window too here so there we go we'll scale it uh, we'll set the transparency to 50 percent again and uh, a couple scale figures again you could add more you could add less you could add furniture you could add other things like that pretty simple to do um, but just adds adds another sense of how big this place is. It adds, adds a little bit of detail in some of these blank rooms and it becomes really nice. Now, there's one other trick that you can add to sections. Again, regular sections or um, section perspectives such as this and do some things with lighting perhaps. Now, I, obviously in this original drawing I have shadows on um, and I always like shadows but certainly is casting some deep shadows back in a couple of these rooms so I think especially like this this room down here, this bedroom that's down here, adding a light, and perhaps in this living room area, adding a light uh, will be simple. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this pretty simply. I actually have a whole series of videos about night rendering, which goes a lot into lighting, both how to, how to make a light in Photoshop through various techniques. There's lots of ways of doing it, as well as sort of quick way that I'm going to show in this one. You can always go to that for more detail. There's ways on how to do point lights and bright spots and, and all these various things. I encourage you to look at that. But adding a little bit of lighting to this drawing can make a lot of sense. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a new layer underneath my scale figures in my case. Uh, I think that's the right spot. I'm gonna call it lighting. If I were good, I'd go and change the name of these things. Uh, but you know, there's not too many layers here, so I'm okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and change my foreground color to the lighting color I want. And I like, you know, I like to go sort of warm, so it's going to be a yellowish orange and sort of up in this range up in here. Um, close to white, but give it some life. And say OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my selection. I'm going to go to the ellipse marquee tool right here. And 
I'm going to imagine like there's a light on the ceiling and it's maybe like casting its light down on these back walls down here. So I'm going to start with this one over here. And actually I think I'm going to start the center point because I know the center point wants to be about at the ceiling, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to click right here. And if I press ALT on my keyboard, we can see that makes it the center point of that circle or ellipse. And I'm going to keep it an ellipse and I'm purposely extending it right now outside of my drawing. Um, and I'm going to have to delete part of this later on, but I want it to come down probably not all the way to the floor, but you know, something like, like this and get an ellipse about that size. Your drawing, of course, is going to be different, but make it come from the ceiling and down about three quarters of the way down the wall is usually pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Select, and I'm going to go to Modify, and I'm going to go to Feather. And I'm not sure what radius I need to use. I used 30 for something last time, which is why mine's coming up this way. But what, I'm going to, what Feather's going to do is going to make it, instead of being a solid fill when I fill this in in a moment, it's going to feather it out so it's like sort of gradient across each side. So let's see what 30 does. I'll just say OK. All right, here we go, and I'll go Edit, Fill, and I'm going to go Foreground Color and say OK. We can see how it, it feathers it away. In, in my case, 30 seemed OK, but if 30 was not OK, if your feather was not OK, undo it, then uh, undo the feather, undo the fill, undo the feather, then redo it, the feather with a different number. But I'm going to use this one. I'm going to say that's OK. Uh, one thing I am going to do is I don't like how high up on... Uh, I think it's too high up in the wall, so I'm going to pull it down just a bit. I think that'll be okay. You won't notice the fact that it's fading there here once I'm done. Now what I'm going to do to this is I'm just going to take a, a rectangle marquee and I'm going to just make sure I get all the feather to make sure I have it all selected there. And I'm going to copy by going to my move tool and pressing ALT on my keyboard and then I'm going to sort of set it where I want it to be set in here, say right, right about there. And I'll do select deselect, which is control D as a shortcut. Um, there we go. And so I've got two lights now in this room. They're obviously extending in areas they don't want to. This one extends outside the house. This one extends into this room in a little bit. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to come to my polygon lasso tool and I'm going to select areas that I don't want the light to, to extend in, including this truss here. And I'm going to say, just in case there's anything against this wall, I'll come down this wall. And I can go way wide out. That doesn't matter because I'm selecting areas that I don't need. And I'll hit Delete. And I could have done the next one in this case or at the same time or separately as I'm doing here. I'll select it here, select around, hit Delete. And now we can see now the light is only in, in these two rooms, sort of like it's shining down. If your light were on the side of the wall, do the same thing, but do the oval out to the left or the right. If it's if the lighting's on the floor, or if it's a floor lamp or table lamp or something, do the same thing, but have it go in the upwards direction. Now you can make the argument that this light is too bright, and, and it might be, so just go here and change your transparency to set wherever wherever you would like it. If you don't quite like the color, just go to Image Adjustments Hue Saturations, and you can change the color or the saturation of the lightness. I like my color, so I'm going to leave it as is, but that's just a quick tip there. And there we go, I've added some lighting. And so the lighting and the people especially are very, very subtle, but they really add a bunch of life and interest to the drawing. It adds, instead of just having a gray plane back in here that's too dark, this subtle shift in tones and colors and warmth, it just really brings life to the drawing. So, so I encourage you to sort of use these tricks and always go above and beyond, even though these things aren't necessarily required for building sections, or these would even might work for elevations and other such, draw, such drawings. Adding these le levels, adding these little details can really make uh, a big difference in the way people just perceive them. So have fun with this and go ahead and make great drawings.